Welcome! Thanks for checking back in on my mountain adventures. If you like western fur trade history and mountain man history and lore like I do, you're probably always interested in new books, articles, and other information on the topic. Well, have you heard of the Rocky Mountain Fur Trade Journal? If not, where have you been? To me, this is the most exciting publication to come along, specifically dealing with the western fur trade history, maybe ever. The publication of this annual journal is a cooperative effort between the Museum of the Mountain Men and the Sublette County Historical Society, both located in Pinedale, Wyoming. I've been privileged to be a peer reviewer for submissions to the journal for the past three years, and it has been an enjoyable and rewarding experience. Let me show you some of the journals. This is the first one, Volume 1, published in, in the year 2007. Can you see that very well? And I'll go through each of the journal's table of contents really quickly and just read to you um, the papers that have been submitted. Uh, volume 1 contains um, Rocky Mountain Rivalry, the Hudson Bay Company's involvement in the American fur trade rendezvous system. That was by Dell F. Topham. Also, Forgotten in the Fur Trade, the Deerskin Trade of the High Plains and Intermountain West, 1540 to 1882, by Ken Zontek. The Superior Dignity of Such a Character, 19th Century American Manhood and the Image of Kit Carson by Dr. Matthew uh, Despain. Next one is Hawaiians in the American Fur Trade by Keith Hippel. The Yankee Peddler, Introduction of the Percussion Lock Firearms into the Far West by Alex Miller. Perceptions of a Mountain Man, John Jeremiah Liver Eating Johnson of Old Trail Town, Cody, Wyoming by Nathan E. Bender. And lastly, Fame Over Misfortune, La Verendre and the Opening of the Western Fur Trade by Brad Tennant. That was a very exciting uh, initial release and, and uh, really set the tone and uh, the excitement level built, built quite a bit after the release of that first journal. Uh, here's volume two. Can you see that? Okay, that was released in 2008. And again, quickly the contents for that. Uh, number one, The Legend of Jedediah Smith, Fact, Fancy, and Opinion by James C. Ald. Trapper's Cash, Trade Goods, Equipment, and Clothing of the William Ashley and Jedediah Smith Trapping Ventures by Clay Landry. Antonio Montero and the Portuguese Houses, An Outpost on Powder River by Gary Peterson. Sweet Encounters, Mountain Men and the Honey Bee on the Fur Trade Frontier by G. Gage Skinner. Mountain Man as Mountaineer, Fur Trappers and John C. Fremont's Ascent in the Wind River Range by Terence Ian Dunn. To, to Preserve Peace on the Frontiers, Federal Regulation and the Fur Trade by Dr. Brad Tennant. And lastly, Sheltering the Fur Trade, Portable and Improvised Shelters of the Rocky Mountains by Doyle Reed. And most recently released last, uh, last year, Volume 3 in 2009, and don't, the artwork on these journals are all exceptional. And the quality of the printing, just beautiful. Let me show you that. Can you see that very good? Hopefully. Okay, you can find all these. I'll tell you in just a minute where you can find these and you can get a better picture of the covers there. Table of contents for volume number three. Revisiting the Coulter Legend by John C. Jackson. The Taos Whiskey Trade by Joe Kirst. An American Fur Company Northwest Trade Gun. Uh, presented by Barry C. Bonnet. Formidable Men and Heroes, The Forgotten Delaware Mountaineers, again by Doyle Reed, that was his second submission. Alfred Jacob Miller, The Artist and the Greenhorn, Lost and Found in Wind River Country, 1837, by Siobhan Kelly. The Spanish Saddle, Choice of the Rocky Mountain Fur Men, by Clay Landry, again a second submission. And also a second submitter, Ken Zontek, uh, A Fur Trader's Tale of Saving the Bison. So as I mentioned, if you love fur trade and western fur trade history especially, uh, just hearing the table of contents there should uh, really elicit a lot of excitement in you and make you want to find these journals. Each summer the, the museum hosts a recitation and awards uh, ceremony for the authors who, who presented their papers uh, at the Pinedale Museum. And that's generally uh, done in conjunction with the Green River Days in Pinedale, Wyoming. Um, if you want further information about these journals or Green River Days, you can visit the website museumofthemountainman.com 
or just uh, search on uh, Green River Days in Pinedale, Wyoming. I um, hope this has been valuable. These journals should be in every serious fur trade history historian's library. Hey, thanks for dropping in. We'll see you again soon.